follow the goat to the first tee. Get like, get like, oh. What is happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is bright and early, the last day out here in Portugal. We are back in Lisbon, 10 miles outside of the center of downtown Lisbon is this beautiful little tucked away golf gym called Lisbon Sports Club. We have made our way out here. We actually had no plans to play golf this morning, but our flight wasn't until like five or yeah. so. By all means, we were gonna get as much golf in as possible on this trip. It's a little chilly, so I've got this uh, nice little like warm up breaker kind of thing on, oh, but we gotta, are- You gotta take that off for we are both wearing the parrot shirt today yeah it's team go low we're gonna see how low we can go as a team. We are parrot buddies. We've been arch nemesis for the last couple videos, so now we're gonna team together and just do a best ball. Whoever shoots the lowest score on that hole, that will actually count for the overall score. So post down below what you guys think. Comment, let us know. Do we go below 70? What do you, what do you think? I think do we, we go. I, I think we can break par. We should I, be able to break par. I think we're gonna shoot around 70. Oh, it's a par 69. Oh, par 69. So we should be able to break that. We should hopefully shoot in the 60s. We're gonna play the back tips at 5300 <laughs> meters so we should be it's a short course it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun yeah it should there. be a lot of fun and it looks it looks actually pretty amazing the, so the first hole is any indication it's gonna be interesting kind of maybe a little quirky I'm guessing we were greeted by a goat yeah we walked we've up. already seen a goat <laughs> he is a goat he <laughs> is seeing us off the to the first tee. It's got all signs for an awesome YouTube video for you guys, so stay tuned and uh, yeah, let's get into it right now. All right, here on the first tee, we have a par three, 168 meters. Welcome to Lisbon's oldest golf competition, 100 Lis, I don't know what this is. Not sure, but this was established in 1922, which is a pretty long time ago. We're on the first tee box here. They've got like a lifeguard chair back here. And then a little putting green, which we did not see. We did not see the driving range either. We are fresh off of our Uber. Not a sponsor, by the way. But we have a sweet little par three hole here, starting off straight downhill. Some bunkering in the front. Got like a little fun hill on the left. We pull our first shot. Might be able to get a little ricochet onto the green. But this is my first course I've ever played where the first hole is a par three. Patrick, what are your thoughts? There's not a lot of them. I'm trying to think of some opening par three shots. And man, I'm drawing a blank. I know they have one that's in the open, Rota. There's not many. It's a rare thing to start with so here we go we're gonna go off to be a lot of fun guys first on the tee box patrick 194 playing about 180 pin in the very back the maintenance guy is maintenance guy is right in the middle for a thin ball but first swing of the day oh team parrot fish is off to the starts that is going left towards that hill should get the friendly bounce it does. Ooh, just a little too long. Brody almost didn't go full parrot apparel. Yeah, I go full parrot. Team parrot. Oh, gosh. This is one of those swings that you already know. Anything can happen. Pretty good sacks from the man here, the dark horse. You know what? I packed for uh, three rounds of golf, did not pack for four, so I am improvising. Oh, boy. It's pretty good. On the same sort of line mine was. Exactly. Hopefully you shot a distance. I think it's a little shorter. So he's probably pin high. Pin high just left. Okay, walking up to the first green here, we're getting our first kind of inspection of the greens. Interesting to see kind of what Patrick's thoughts are when he walks to the first green of a new course. Do you take much into account or do you just kind of do it as it is? Yeah, you kind of look at it and you know you feel it with your feet and get a get a sense for it. This one looks a little scraggly, probably pretty slow. A little spongy, they'll probably hold. They look nice. It looks like a, like a mix of Poa and, and Bent, which is pretty typical. And we're gonna chip this one in. Oh yeah. So Patrick just went a little long, put a little more juice on that than I think he was expecting. My distance actually worked out pretty nice for me. I'm pin high. Probably should chip this out, but I have the putter, so I might just be putting it. If it releases, which it does, and he's just gonna be just short. What a shot. Brody with the chip, he's borrowing my wedge. But since we're on the same team, that's perfectly legal in this sort of go-lo competition. And oh! Oh, it rolls out though. Well, I mean, you, I felt like you were in for par. I love the faith in my four footers. All right, this for a par, we may or may not need this. I hope we don't, but Damn. it'd also be nice just to make it. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, dark horse. Making me pick up. Got that's a you, partner. That's a power even after one. Let's go. I'm not rocking the gum that I think Phil or Tiger or all those guys. I don't know what gum they actually are eating. But I have a little bit of a chiclet peppermint flavor. It's already lost its taste, so I'm already kind of over it. But we made par, so I think I'm just gonna keep rocking it until uh, something bad happens. Spit it out, change the mojo, and move on from there. All right, we're out here on the second hole now, 403 meters, which means we're hitting driver. It looks to be a straight one right down the chute. There's some trees, so you gotta keep it straight. We're looking to do that here on the second hole. 403 meters, kind of a long par four. Patrick starts it off right, kind of using the slope, should bounce left. It does get the bounce and should have a good little shot in from there. Nice lead on. Oh, it's a beautiful sight from behind the tee in number two at Lisbon Sports Club. Brody with the drive. Let's see the straight ball here. Nope. And that is on some other hole. We're gonna find that one though. I knew that was gonna be bad as soon as I stepped up to the ball. That uh, felt really bad. Uh, he's feeling wonky early, oh. that's okay. So we're push carting this today. Did have the option of going golf cart or what they call a buggy over here. When you get the opportunity to walk, you pretty much have to take it. For me, walking, not only do you enjoy it more with having more time actually on the court, gives you a little bit more time in between shots to think. But also I think when you're in the cart, you kind of just hit a shot, jump in the cart, drive really, really quick up to your next ball hit your next shot, and you're not really paying too much attention to the golf course when you're driving. Good point, Brody. Do you agree, kind of? Oh, I love it. You gotta, you gotta feel the golf course. If you walk it, it's a different experience. The undulations. And we're the only ones out here. We're here with the workers, and that's it. Pretty nice, peaceful little walk. Patrick found himself over here after a friendly bounce off the hill. He's got about 185 yards. What club are you going? Another five iron. Another five, back to back. A Little bit of a spotty lie. Great contact, a little heavy though through that rough, but it's got some top spin on it. It'll jump forward like it does. It's rolling up, disappearing, which is always a nice thing, and rolls right by the hole just on the backside, stays yeah, on. Close. Maybe like a 10 foot puffer birdie, what a shot. A good indication that you hit a bad shot, guys, is when you have to cross over a ravine on a bridge. I'm right here, perfectly in the middle of the fairway. This is what we're looking at here. Should be a fun one. All right, this is gonna be an interesting one because we got another fairway lie. Brody's going right, he's, you can see where he's aiming. There's, you can actually see a little bit of the pin through the, through the gap in the trees. He's only got about 135. A little help. The only thing that's gonna stand his way is the tree from a visual standpoint. Throw up a gap wedge. Yeah, this could be good. It's a pretty good opportunity for such a wildly left drive. The joy of playing the other fairway is something that is goes underappreciated in this game. You see Tiger Woods do it all the time. <laughs> it's a good shot, but a little right. He's gonna miss the green. Probably have a little chip. Not well executed. Not well executed. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Words from the dark horse. The sun is starting to come out and this course is starting to pop. Patrick's ball rolled all the way through the backside. He's just on the fringe on the back here. And my ball just kind of squared out to the right. I'm up here. I'm going to have to hit a pretty delicate flop shot. All right, we got Brody came up a little short right. Oh, pretty good. That's a, bad bounce. That's a tough shot. You got to bail me out here. All right, looking for a bailout. Patrick just off the outside of the green here. He's thinking there might be a little bit of a depression underneath his ball and might get some air. It might be like an old man chipper shot where it's a putting stroke, but it comes out like a chip. This is for birdie to get us to one under. Team Parrots. It actually comes out nicely. Go a little bit. Oh, it just comes up a little short. He's got that left for par. Little three footer, something that he should be able to clean up nicely. Actually, it might be a two and a half footer. One of those that the pros make 99% of the time. He's not a professional, but dang, but it is there. hard to say he isn't. That's a good par. First two holes, tough par. We'll stay even par through the first two and see what we can do moving on to this next one. T number three is up the side of this hill. The first three holes so far, guys, have been pretty incredible for a course that wasn't on the agenda, wasn't on any sort of, you know, Portugal golf list, wasn't on Patrick's radar, which you already know at that point it's a dark horse course. Oh, look at this little number. And he's liking the view. We're gonna spin it around and see what it looks like. I mean, pretty good. Ooh, Dude. so the green's out there. Pin is in the middle left, it looks like. It is really tough, because these trees actually come out yeah. quite 
quite a bit more than it might look yeah, like on camera. A little a bit more members here, they'd be complaining about these, these trees. <laughs> they would ask for the shrubbery guy yeah. to come out and trim these down. It's an awesome looking golf hole. This looks insane. Wow, what a hole right here. Patrick has pulled his club. He's going eight. As you can see, we have a lot of club selections up here. He's feeling eight is the right one. I'm gonna have to hammer this though. He's feeling a hammer job for the eight iron. We're gonna try to zoom in on this one. See what we can do. Oh, oh he, uh, no zoom in needed. That's out to the right. Totally out of play. To okay, so he's relying on the dark horse himself. Uh, what a bummer that was. That wasn't even close. I mean, fun hole to get a hole one on. I'm deep in the, the woods, probably hanging out with bears and goats and snakes. You know what I'm talking about. It's not good over there on the right hand side. Oh, feet oh, and he delivers with a great hard. shot to the center of the green. I don't know if I hit it hard enough. I didn't. <sighs> well, front yeah. of the green. It was a full pitching wedge and I went with like a soft nine. Pretty good shot. Sorry. Right. This is kind of bringing me back a little bit. This is where my ball ended up actually, by the way. And I'm um, just short. And Patrick, we, I thought this actually opened up. He's gone though. He's gone. So he's going to drop, try to chip in for par. This right now, this feeling, just the temperature, it's really, really chilly kind of like that nice cold morning air. This is really reminding me back in the day when I ran cross country actually up at Broward, North Carolina. I did a running camp over summer up there and we'd wake up in the morning, you know, 5, 5.30 and go out for runs and it was just incredible like this. So quiet, all you can hear is the birds. This feeling, this is like this, it's hard to describe like the, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but hopefully uh, Patrick knocks this one in here. Kind of went off on a tangent there a little bit with the the feelings, but I gotta get up and down now for par. But you know what I'm saying? Like this doesn't feel like the temperature, like the the air. It's it's got that nice. You got the trees around. Kind of makes your hair stick up a little a bit. Fresh oxygen. Oh, this place <laughs> is good. Brody with the feelings tangent, but I mean it's great about the game of golf because you'll find a place or a moment that reminds you of some other good time in your life, and then yeah. you can kind of relive that experience. There's a lot of great things about the game. And that's just one of them. Brody tapping into that. You're getting very spiritual out here. Oh yeah, we're about ready to light a bonfire and sing Kumbaya. Some action from the horse. Ooh, a horse of course. Okay. All right, all right, Team Parrot to stay at par. Four par, two stay at par. Crucial for trying to go under par, isn't it? Yeah, we, want, we don't want to get above par and have to get back below. So let's see here with the, look at left center. Feelings. Oh feelings. man, I love it. You put that smile on your face. <laughs> oh yeah, well done. Heading to the number four tee box, going kind of almost like a nature hike. Nature hike time. We're gonna walk through, we're gonna let Patrick lead the way just in case there's any snakes, oh, bears, man. or goats. <laughs> if you enjoy hiking as much as I do, you can kind of in between holes get a hike in. Not only cardio and a little workout, but you again get those feelings of nature out here. We're on the fourth hole, 347 meters. It's roughly uh, 380, 390. It's a beauty it's a straight it's a little bit of a dog leg with the hard slope right to left in the fairway so the play is down the right hand side it's gonna kick hard if you go left you're in that creek that borders the second fairway it's a beauty of a par four we're gonna hammer some drivers oh man this hole is looking real good from a photographer standpoint the lighting up there on the fairway and green is perfect Brody's gonna look to put it into some of that perfect lighting with the driver needs to be a little cut here Oh, perfect. Ball. Oh, he's hit it up the middle with a cut. It's going to hold the fairway perfectly. That's exactly what I wanted. Exactly. Tour quality shots God, from Brody so Smith. Good. Oh, so good. Patrick on the tee box now. These shrubs come in to play a little bit on the right hand side. Shouldn't be an issue. Oh, he's, he's maybe playing the other fairway? Nope, right into hazard. He calls hazard. I call maybe a good lucky bounce. We'll see. Pat, after a drop, he went into the hazard over here. He's got about 184 left. Could use the slope, just starting off on the right hand side. Might need a bounce left. Kind of disappears over the hill. We couldn't really see what happened with it. Going with the long distance view, but he's got 107 yards and a sand wedge in his hand. Green, pretty circular, looks pretty flat. Should be a good shot here. Looks a little right. Oh, and way short. The Santa Ana winds must have punched it in the face. I don't know if the Santa Ana winds go all the way out to Lisbon, Portugal, 
but something grabbed that ball in the air. Not our finest effort, especially for me, having 107 yards, coming, you know, 25 yards short. No excuse for that, other than I just need to work on my wedge distances. Wasn't a bad strike. Pat is over here. He needs to get that up and down for his bogey, I think, but I need to get this up and down for par. Pat is just gonna basically try to make this for a par. No real point in trying lagging it up there for a bogey. I'm probably gonna at least get a bogey with my ball, so. Team Parrot. Going for a par attempt. Gave it a good run. Needs to get a little left. That was really well done though. We're from behind the green here. Brody is attempting to save Team Parrot's par. A little. Sit, see it, sit, sit, sit. Uh, well, he's gonna have a look at it. Make percentage on those is, geez, less than 50%. Patrick's gonna give me a little read here. That is legal in Team Parrot Golf. Gonna give me a little bit of an idea of what my par putt's gonna do. Should move just a little bit to his right, which it does. It's a good bogey. Opted to leave the flag in. It's about 10, 11 feet. Get legs, get legs. Oh, gosh, the flat stick is fire this morning. Fire. I got you, partner. What a partner on the parrot party. Like this video, if you notice, I was playing with my red wedding ring this whole time. I just figured it out after hole four. But let me know in the comments and liking this video if you noticed it. We are making the walk up to hole number five. This looks absolutely insane. This is sick. You're basically doing a trail hike on some of these holes. And this is the coolest one of all of them. Nice little tree banner coming through. Oh, yeah. This is what the people came to see. From an elevated tee, as you can see back here, we've got 444 meters, which translates to, I think, less than 500 yards. So it's a gettable par five, slightly into the breeze. We're looking to get a shot here. We're at even, need a couple shots to get sub 70, but this'll be fun. Birdie on the tee, par five. I lost it into the golf ball colored sky. It should spit itself out. Cool. Oh, Patrick pipes one going down the left-hand side, but should get a bounce off the hill. Kind of disappears on the long on the hillside. We're kind of in the boast the same set, uh, spot of the fairway or hole. I don't I don't know what I'm talking. About. Uh, we're we're moving on. Patrick's found his ball. If I he's move that twig. It's gonna the ball's gonna move. Oh, it's, oh, he's got a resting twig. So it is a loose impediment, but if you move it, it technically is that ball's gonna roll down there. Yeah, right? it's a penalty stroke. So he's gonna leave the loose impediment actually on the ball here. Just kind of punch out. It's a par five. So he's just gonna try to get back into play here and give himself a good chance at birdie. Oh, takes a really aggressive punch out. That was a perfect line. Straight in the fairway. Perfect. Nice shot. Yeah, it's actually Thank perfect. You. Brody looks like somehow got stuck up in that tree and he just did a, a knee drop, which we missed. We missed the knee drop. I walked up just because I kind of wanted to get an idea of what the situation is. When you look at it, you think the hole is somewhere gonna be up up in front yeah. of Pat's ball. You totally think that's it. But the hole is like tucked away due left. So I think the shot is just to go for a crazy hook around this tree line and walk up and see where you end up. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be, be a hook. It's gotta be a hook and yeah, it's a little bit of fun. A little bit of blind shot, but it's a par five. Trying a bit of a different camera angle over here. Brody looks like a tiny little mouse over there, but he's gonna whip it around this. And you can see the green just on the very where the hill meets the, the fairway there, there's the pins right there. All right, needs a hook. Oh! It hit the dang tree, went to the dang hill. I don't know. Did you guys see it? I didn't see it. Patrick, without really knowing this course at all, hit it in the absolute perfect spot. Has just a little wedge left. I'm pretty much out of the hole. That ball hit a tree limb that I didn't even see. Be, be the right distance. Release a little bit. Oh, that might be a kick in birdie. That away, pot, nah. That away, let's get on the board. Yeah. We might be one under after this hole. Not too bad. We have just noticed something. We are not sure what we're about to approach on the next hole. It looks like there's four carts with golf bags right in the middle of this fairway complex. Now, it doesn't look like anybody's manning them though. No, and it almost kind of looks like there's like little baskets next to them that you might have like range balls. That might be the driving range. No, it's not. You're not feeling it? I, I think that maybe they're marking the creek or something. Does it look With like golf bags? Creek? We're gonna find out. <laughs> Patrick hit an absolute beauty into here. 
He's got uh, three feet or so. Definitely one that you should make every time, but at the same time you should take your time because we are in desperate need of a birdie for the first birdie of the day. Lisbon Sports, Port wait, right. Lisbon Sports Club. We're we are low. We are one under. Nicely done, good bird, dude. Hey, thanks, man. There's guys now walking up and grabbing their, so those all, that's a foursome. Mystery has been solved and it's not really that exciting. It's just another foursome with golf bags. But like, why would they leave golf bags in the middle of the fairway? That's the question. It's some sort of, uh, well, they dropped them off because the routing. They know something that we don't. Short par four here, playing 296 meters up on the hill to the left. Trees really come into play. You kind of have to hit a fade around these trees. I'm gonna hit an iron. I, I think we're both hitting iron because we just don't know what's up there. This is hole six, guys. Last hole of part one. We are one under and that is why they put the trees there. But it kind of actually went straight through. Or might have ate him up. We're not really quite sure. We are doing a really bad job on locating balls once they hit trees. So there is the fifth hole. We pan over to the 60. And Brody Smith. We've got a little maintenance guy rolling by. Pumping up the jams with the audio. Rucking the old school John Deere. Driving a truck full of bass salts around out here. Who knows? Brody's having difficulties teeing up his ball. <laughs> He's been at it for quite some time. Yeah. All right. Now he's good. And uh, let's see, I mean, you, the ideal shot is kind of at the pin with a fade to avoid those trees. Now well, he's done the same thing I did, but a little higher. Hopefully it opens up over there. I was super not feeling that shot. <laughs> My ball just kind of ended up over here. Not really that far at all. I hit that, I almost hit the, missed hit the ball. But you can see what these guys are doing. You drop your bags kind of in this little, I don't know, a little swell of grass. I don't know what you call that, mounding? And then you grab your drivers and you walk back to the tee box here and then you blast your tee ball down there. The routing out here, really fun. I'm gonna have a really uphill shot into this green now. And Brody turned out okay. It opens up over here. As long as you don't hit the trees, which unfortunately I did. 134, gap wedge. Good swing. I think he was just aimed a little right. That's my personal opinion. And an evil kick right, it's gonna be Nasty getting up and down. This is gonna be a tough par. All right, a little pseudo drop here for Pat. Hits it a lot better. Still off to the right though. And he gets a devilish bounce. Oh my gosh. This course will eat you up and spit you out. We both ended up right. Pat was more pin high. I hit it a little bit further away than he did. And we're gonna have this pretty difficult up and down. I'm trying to get up and down for bogey. I'm gonna try to get up and down for par. Throws it up there nicely. And it settles right next to the hole. That's a fantastic shot from there. A little preview of seven, you can see, but Brody needs to, you know, he's down there. He's gotta get up here and he's gotta hit it in. It's up and down. Save the par, let's see how he does. And he's not going to be happy leaving that one short. A little bit of disgust from the competitor. We'll stay here with the action. He's going to try to chip it in. Let's see how he can respond. Gather his thoughts. Thoughts still not gathered. <laughs> Gotta laugh at that one. Uh, one Gotta days. laugh at one that. One of those days. Things are getting interesting here. We're certainly going to suffer a bogey because both of these putts are for bogey. We are going to drop back to even. So let's take a moment to just relish the fact that we're currently under par. It's a nice feeling. We'll just wait in it for a second. Ooh. Just outside right edge. Potentially the most important putt of the day right now to keep us at even. Clutch bogey. Clutch bogey. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap up part one out at Lisbon. Lisbon Sports Club. Lisbon Sports Club, hot fire course so far. We are back at even. Even. We yeah. should be probably plus two or so, yeah, but we are we are either. grinding. But more holes to come. A little sneak peek. Look at look how sick. What do you, I mean? What do you think about that? This moat with a green and a green looking across uh, from each other. This course is gonna get better and better. It's gonna keep getting better. So stay with us. Uh, check out Patrick's stuff down in the links below, and uh, we'll see you guys in part two. Make sure you like, comment, do all that fun stuff. Subscribe, turn on your notifications, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Uh -huh.